welcome back to the show. You know, it's a serious mm -hmm. topic that affects a lot of folks. What do you do if your spouse is dealing with an alcohol or a drug addiction? Lamar has been publicly battling his addiction, uh, uh, alleged addictions, and his yeah. wife Chloe so far been sticking by his side. But is it a good idea or a bad idea to stick by your spouse? How do you handle it? Marriage and sex therapist Leslie Gustafson is here with her advice. Okay, Leslie, first of all, I want to start with the notion of, like Chris just said, standing by someone. Because isn't, I mean, when you stand up there at the altar, you take those vows. Hmm. It's for better, for worse. Right. It's sickness and in health. So yeah. is it wrong to be standing by someone like this, to be showing your support? Uh, for them fighting the addiction? Standing by and support is one thing, but what tends to happen for the person with the person with the addiction is that they're consumed with it. The whole focus mm. of the relationship becomes addiction. Fighting the addiction, fixing the addiction, rescuing the addict. It's codependency. He, totally, well, I mean, or co-addiction even is the word that's used Shouldn't now. that be the priority though at that point? Like you well, want the, them to get healthy. Yes, but the idea that you can change the alcoholic or addict is where people go wrong mm -hmm. and so they're trying to push treatment all the time and fix it and hide the alcohol uh, you know they're so invested in fixing them that all of the energy starts to orbit around the addict and he oftentimes she they're still in the denial they're still hanging on to the addiction and they're not making movement but they're infecting the whole family or the relationship this because is something it's because the primary preoccupation. Almost everyone who's known an addict or had one in the family's dealt with this and it's the idea of uh, do you suggest then drawing the bottom line, here's my bottom line, I'm willing to help you if you get help right now. Well, and that's, and that's the second piece of this, is you've got to change the way that you're doing it. You've got to get a new perspective and get the focus off the fixing and more on your own self-care, which is drawing those boundaries and getting a life again. Sometimes there's years and years of addiction and preoccupation and focus on this that the, the, the wife or the husband kind of loses themselves and they don't even have a life anymore or their own awareness and kids are suffering in the home because everyone's orbiting around them. So yeah, you do need to get to that place where you're like, enough is enough for me. And I'm going to take care of me now and I'm going to get some help and support. And a lot of times what that does is pulls the power away from the addiction and from the addict. And they can sometimes get very upset at that point because it's not all about them. Right. And so putting those boundaries in place. And yes, sometimes ultimatums can lead to an intervention where everybody gathers together and confronts the addict and says enough is enough. We're not taking it anymore. And you need to get the help finally. And sometimes you can break through. A lot of times the breakthrough happens with continued brokenness, misery, if you don't increased break through, pain. If you don't break through, do then you, you have leave some, them? Do you then leave them? you have some really hard choices to make. Should you leave them? Um, do you, think? you have to think about the toxicity and the impact on everybody involved. And if it's hurting children and it's continuing to hurt you and you're having no impact, maybe. Maybe you have to bottom line sometimes with saying enough is enough and we're done. And sometimes that does, that is the final blow that allows them to get the treatment that they need. But you have to be ready to really make that, not just say it, not just threaten. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that, I mean, I just finished actually reading a really great book on addiction. And cool. one of the biggest points that this book makes is that it doesn't matter how much they love the people in their lives who are telling them and urging them to stop or convincing them that they're killing themselves. It has to be, there has to be that inclination like a light switch flips in the per the addict that says, okay, I want to do it now. I'm doing it. So do you think if the pressure, yeah. if everybody else kind of takes a step back and says, you know, you, you do it when you're ready. Do you think then they might be more inclined to actually, oh, wow, I might lose this person. I think when you, the consequences start adding up that you start getting a possible window to the addict or alcoholic to consider it. There has to be enough negative consequences, it seems like, to break through where they're miserable enough and they finally want help. It's rarely like they wake up one day and go, you know, I just need to stop doing that. Right. Um, the because they're bottom. so entrapped. I mean, there's so much denial with long-standing addiction in particular. I mean, we see it in our office all the time. This is our, you know, kind of a primary population that we work with. Um, and a lot of times the change doesn't happen, but everybody's kind of, you know, losing the battle around them. Sure. We're, we're short on time let me ask you, mm -hmm. would you recommend, I mean, they've got Al-Anon and yes. Nar-Anon, yes. which are support groups yes. for 
family members of addicts. Good advice? Great advice. Go to the support groups. Those are excellent groups for getting perspective and realizing that you're not alone and that there are other strategies besides just hanging in there and trying to fix it. Excellent. Yeah. You, you're fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you're and kind. You ought to follow her on Twitter. <laughs> yes. And you can do that. Mm -hmm. It is at... Authentic, authentic true, uh -huh. right? Authentic true. You got yeah. it. You can follow her and even ask her questions there on Twitter. Please. Yeah. Do, do you answer? I was just going to ask. Oh, do I you love answer, to answer when, questions. Perfect. Yeah. I've got a list. So oh, I'll just and I do it on our tweeting. Facebook page all the time too. People can back channel me and She'll ask. Be tweeting you. I'll be <laughs> tweeting all day, Leslie. I hope you're sitting by what your you desk today. <laughs> we got more after the Thank break. Thank you so Stick much. Stick around.